All right. Hello. Good morning, folks. And we've got Michelle Nodebloom here and uh, Chuck Wareflow Webster. And Michelle is uh, joining us, and she's going to give us a perspective today. She wrote a nice blog post a couple of weeks ago about her experience with her doc, uh, separated by a year apart. She is a journalist, uh, IT, uh, very interested in the IT area, and uh, does marketing as well. And of course, uh, Chuck is a, a workflow expert, uh, multiple degrees, and he and I have gotten uh, quite interested in Blab, Periscope, and uh, just wanted to uh, uh, introduce everyone here today. And Michelle, uh, I'll go ahead and give you the floor if that's okay with you, Chuck, and, uh, and uh, have at it. So good to have you both here this morning. Hi, and this is this is my first blab, so I'm very excited. So um, I went to just a, a normal family practice uh, annual exam. And I found it interesting that uh, when I went a year ago, the, the practice had just gotten up and running on actually Epic. And uh, the, they have a, the, there's a big monitor, very, very big monitor um, in the room. And the medical assistant and doctor at that time were, were, they would be putting information in there. I could see as they were entering the information, what, what was being inputted, which I found was very, you know, I'm, in a geeky way, very fascinated by the whole thing and I thought it was great. Um, this year when I went, the medical assistant still put information into the system um, and I could see that. However, the doctor walked in and he said he had a simple one sheet of paper that had just a summary um, of my information and, um, whoops. I disappeared. Yeah, Chuck, you're, you're um, still here. Chuck, Chuck disappeared, and you moved into his I'm spot. Sure. So he may have yeah, he may be having some internet yeah. issues at the airport. I'm not sure. Hopefully, he'll pop back on. But go ahead. Um, anyway, the so the monitor was not it was totally ignored at that time, and he and he he looked at me close up, two three feet away, and discussed everything with me rather than actually inputting it. Um, and when he left the room, I could hear him dictating right outside of the room, you know, the basic information. After the exam, I, I, I asked the medical assistant, well, how come, you know, he's not using the, the documenting in the room anymore. And he, and the, the medical assistant said that he likes to have that, doesn't want anything to interfere with the patient exam. He wants the patient to feel like he's totally present, giving them his full attention, which was Interesting. I mean, I can see it as a patient. I can actually see it both ways, which is, I'm not sure. I think if I were a less geeky patient, I probably would like the way he did it. Um, yes. It was, it was nice to have that. Um, I had his full attention. That was a very nice feeling. Um, although it, it was, it's also interesting to see what exactly is being put in there. And, and subsequently I did get a copy of the chart note and, and noticed some things that were really not quite, you know, right. Mm -hmm. um, that I may have mentioned, you know, um, it, nothing material, but as a patient, I might, I might've mentioned that, Oh wait, that, that, that piece of information is not correct. So well, when I read Amen. well, when I read your uh, uh, blog, um, and I've got a link to it in our little message section up a ways, and uh, but when I read that, it brought back memories of when I um, started doing what I call projected EHR several uh, years ago, and it was one of these situations where it was uh, really uh, several different occurrences that happened that uh, got me even trying this, but. I actually broached the subject of doing this with patients after I, when my thir then 13 year old son taught me how to mirror my Chromebook onto a large screen TV by reading EKGs and it, and the light bulb went off. And I thought, how about if I do this at the visit with a wall mounted TV and I bounce that off several patients and I've got a fairly uh, elderly group of folks. I've got about 40% Medicare patients and on a typical day, probably three quarters of the folks I do see are Medicare age patients. And I bounced this idea off of them and they thought I was, ah, no, we would not be interested in that at all. So I, for several weeks, I just didn't even think about it. And then we took a trip down to Helena 
Costco and there was a cheap 24 inch TV on, on, on sale. And I just bought it and I just started doing it. And what you, what you describe, Michelle, uh, in that article, uh, really rings true with my experience of what happened when I first started this whole process. And that is, um, I wasn't sure how folks were going to take it, you know, from, from a patient's perspective, I wasn't exactly sure how I was going to be able to handle, you know, talking to the patient, focusing on the patient and also working in the electronic record. And I thought it quite honestly, I thought I'd actually end up with the TV at home in my elliptical room uh, so I could exercise to it. So I thought if anything, I'm going to get this TV and I'll take it. I've got a wall mount. I'll just wall mount it at home. And interestingly enough, what really panned out for me was that the elderly complex patient was actually probably more interested in this approach than I ever dreamed of. And uh, and really, a lot of my patients, I don't take a lot of new patients on. So most of the data that I do have in the chart, I don't have to input a lot of data when I'm with them. And what I found is that there's a huge difference between documenting and using the electronic record for an educational purpose, which I really discovered by this approach. And uh, so that's 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 my thought in a nutshell after reading through your through your blog and about your experience. But I think, you know, I think it can be done and quite easily if all the right pieces of the puzzle are, are there. Uh, and it's a lot like probably like doing Periscope and blogging. Uh, it's something that as a doc, I had to get used to using this new tool in the exam room uh, and and using it to our the patient eyes advantage. And I think it can be done and can be done quite easily. Um, but that's my experience. You know, and, and I, I will just take a comparison. I have a, a, a specialist that I go to, a gastroenterologist, who who actually sits and types, doesn't have the separate monitor, sits in front and types, and he, he has it all positioned face, facing the patient um, during the exam. But I, at one point, he was wanting to show me uh, a picture of my esophagus that from the scope, and I. He said, well, come look at it. So I just, you know, got up and looked at his, his monitor, which is fascinating. He's like, you can see the rings here and, and, and like that, which as a patient, I was like, this is, this is amazing. Now I know exactly what, and now I can say, okay, well, this yeah. is what's wrong. You know, that, so that, that was to me fascinating to be able to do that. And I think it kind of takes it to the next level of participating and understanding what's going on. And maybe Chuck health. can answer this more in fully, but I, after using this approach, I started this, I think it was January two years ago. Uh, well, it'll be January, 2014 when I started this approach. But what I've been amazed at is um, how important visual learning is. I guess I never really realized how important visual in combination with speech, uh, with the electronic record. Chuck, would you would you be able to comment on that visual learning versus just learning from voice uh, and the combination thereof? Well, I'm not a, uh, well, I actually did take a bunch of courses in cognitive psychology and there is a, um, an interesting, um, we, we, you know, the whole left hemisphere, right hemisphere, uh, I'm not sure about um, the relevance of that, but we have two, uh, sort of two brains. We have a, uh, uh, one's a visual brain, a visual learning brain, a visual processing brain, uh, and that visual brain also involves um, the way in which we project ourselves to other people, gestures, uh, and we also have a, an auditory and a language brain uh, and memory. And so, to give you an example, uh, you know, the, sometimes people have a, a, have trouble remembering uh, phone numbers, and uh, one little trick is if you have like a you know, a, you know, seven-digit phone number or, or longer, is to uh, is to memorize four or five of those digits by speaking them, to say them over and over again while visu while, while visualizing the other four or five. Okay, so even, so there's no way that you can that that, that, you, that your auditory or, or text-oriented brain and your visual brain could actually do both, but if you split up the task, and 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 then they're connected. To each other, they reinforce each other, and so I think that when you tell something, someone to tell something to someone, and you show them the same thing at the same time, uh, you're going to use more of their uh, sort of brain capacity, and then also you're going to reinforce a, a lot of interesting learning connections, you know, between those two halves of our 
our cognitive system. So that's, that's my, uh, that's yeah. my no, I, th- I think I, I think that's cognitive. excellent. And I, I that and from a physician perspective, Michelle, like the doc, your gastroenterologist, I think you said that showed the scope. For me, I've got this. And I come from a family of teachers. My sister, my dad's a teacher. I married a teacher. Um, and uh, what I like is I've got this big screen, and I can stand up with a big see-through ruler, and I can graph out blood pressures. And, it, and it's been a lot of fun for me. I can stand up and, and have all this inherent data that's already there graphed out. And I can. what's amazed me is when I graph out weights and blood pressures over time, the correlation there. I mean, I've, I've read about it. I've thought about it. When I see it time after time after time with patients, when their weight goes up, their blood pressure goes up. When their weight goes down, their blood pressure. It's really kind of cool. And then to demonstrate that in real time with their own uh, graphs, it's really a lot of fun. And I think from a patient's perspective, I think they get a lot more out of it than just trying to, hey, your blood pressure is this today and it was that a year ago. It's really hard to convey all that uh, with the language, but when you see it, you get it right away. Same thing with medication reconciliation. When you see the medications and we go through, I do all my own, mac- those kinds of visual uh, educational uh, encounters, I think, uh, we really ought to be incorporating the electronic record. We as physicians, I think, in an in a advantageous way, much more than we, uh, as far as I understand, reading through, you know, uh, different articles, this, that, and the other, and the disillusion with the electronic record. I think we really have an opportunity to change that and use the technology to the advantage. So that's been my two-year experience. Do you ever have, do you ever have patients who say, ask you not yes. to be on the computer? Yes, and, just, they want and I just don't use it. So I've got it right there in front of me, and I just it's very easy to do, and I can unhook it if they want me to. And yes, I do. But the large majority, especially the elderly complex, really like it. So I have very few uh, that actually ask me to do it. And surprisingly, the young, healthy uh, folks that are really into their tech, their phones and such, they aren't really into it because they're simple. They don't have a lot of complex issues, so they're not really that interested. So it's really the inverse of what I thought going into it when I first started all this, which is kind of interesting. You know, I found surprising. I thought I'd scare the elderly complex off with a lot of data, all this stuff, and it would just overwhelm them and scare them. But in fact, when you walk people through step by step, they really, I think it really is extremely helpful. So that's, that's my two cents. Chuck, can you mute, mute, mute your mic, it says, get show, social help. Oh, yeah, yeah you're getting, I'm sorry. I have a, yeah, I'm in a busy airport here, so. That's okay. Um, we, can, we can still. Let's see. I don't have a button on my mic, but uh, I'm looking in my upper <laughs> right hand corner here and janet if you want to uh, hop on with your padded room we'd love to have you <laughs> i don't know if you saw that michelle but last blab we had she was working out some uh at a table she was sitting underneath a foam table and it was she was working on her sound system she's got a big fancy mic and uh, it was kind of fun to watch so i had to tease her a little bit there but uh, but uh hmm. I'm just, I'm just glad my dogs aren't. Bald. Yeah. So, so Michelle, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, kind of what you do, and uh, if you don't mind, and we'd love to hear about that. Um, yeah. So, so I'm, I'm, I, one of the things I do right now is I work with uh, the HL7 standards blogs with Ch- uh, Chad Johnson and um, help do the, twi- the tweets that for the HATSM. Um, chats and uh, get, help get uh, people to moderate those on a weekly basis. So I've been doing that for about a year now, which is very fun. I've learned a lot. So, um, and then I write for the blog a couple times a month. I also write regularly for H, uh, Healthcare IT News, which is Kim's publication, and as well as work with uh, a number of uh, several different vendors. Well, I, yeah, and I was able to hit the last few uh, HITSM tweet chats, and, and I find them always to be very interesting. And, uh, and Chuck and I, uh, uh, well, Chuck, I think you, uh, you, um, I'm not sure what, moderated. I think you helped moderate one, what, last week or the week before, didn't you, Chuck? Yeah, about, about Blab and Periscope. Yes, 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 yes. Um, and uh, Chuck, so go ahead and tell us your thoughts on Blab and Periscope with the HITSM tweet chat you had recently. Well, okay, great. I'd be delighted. Um, 
Well, I think it was reflected in my questions. And I, there was a fun question in there, which was, how would you rather the uh, CDC get a hold of you during a zombie apocalypse? <laughs> yeah, I like that. Twitter, Facebook, Blab, or Periscope. Uh, and uh, that, that generated some pretty funny uh, comments, such as snail mail, I'll be dead. <laughs> um, but, uh, I'll, 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 but seriously, and, I, and I've actually I've been uh, saying this uh, frequently, and that is uh, we will see Periscope and uh, Twitter essentially become a single application. Uh, and uh, right now there's a moderate amount of uh, inter- you, know, you can tweet out a link and, and so forth. But just like Vine runs automatically in a tweet as it, as it goes by. Uh, and, and I, you know, I, in fact, I predicted about a month ago that we'd be able to tweet screenshots. We couldn't at the time, but now you can. Uh, and then recently I copied, the, I believe I copied both of you on um, a list of five areas in which uh, Periscope will likely become more tightly integrated with Twitter. So if you love Twitter, uh, which I love, Twitter, I'm going to change my life. Um, I, I, you know, Periscope is, is, I think, you know, Twitter is kind of, there are a lot, there are a lot of folks that are worried about Twitter. Uh, it, it's, it's sort of uh, peaked at about, I don't know, 200 million or 250 million versus, you know, Facebook's over a billion. And, um, and so, you know, there, it, it is confusing. Uh, it can be confusing. Um, and also there are problems with uh, trolls, you know, uh, and uh, abuse and, uh, online and so forth. And it's, people, I find people are nicer uh, on Periscope and Blab than they are on Twitter in general. I mean, there's yeah. a lot of snark on Twitter. And that's why I love, I love Twitter because of all the, you know, the quick repartee. Uh, but when you're face-to-face with someone, you're, you're nicer to them. Mm-hmm. And so I think that Periscope and Blab uh, bring, can bring back a, a certain uh, kind of empathy and intimacy and uh, building of relationships that go, kind of goes beyond Twitter. So you meet people on Twitter for the first time. And then when I see them at, the, uh, at, a, at a conference, it's like, you know, it's cordial. Uh, but I have a feeling that those people that I've met on Blab and on Periscope are practically going to give them a hug. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm online somewhere, with them so much. Uh, and then the other thing is, is I think, um, I think you know, so so I think uh, you're going to see, um, uh, you know, I, I, for example, uh, so I just tweeted this uh, Blab out, uh, and it had the option. It tweets out a, an animated GIF. Okay. So it's actually showing about you know five or six seconds over and over again of us sort of nodding and gesticulating and so forth, and that's just like that's kind of like an example of the line that I was just talking about. Uh, so uh, it'll be fascinating to see how Twitter and, and, and Periscope. In fact, I call it Twitter. I say uh, yeah. Twitter plus Periscope equal, equals P W I T T E R, uh, and uh, what, what, that's that's sort of my my uh, big picture. Of what of what I think is going on. Well, what I've what I've done recently, two different times this past week, is that I'm tweeting with someone. Uh, one was Marie O'Connor in Ireland, and she was showing uh, showing some photos of some beautiful blackberries on a bush. And then uh, then I was tweeting with Katie Hanlon from Massachusetts. And she had just tweeted about the Montana statehood. So in follow-up to both of those tweet conversations, I actually did a quick Periscope and attached it to our tweet conversation just to make Periscope, you know, make that marriage of Periscope and Twitter a little more meaningful. So when you go back in time, you can actually see that. So I thought that was kind of a cool way to uh, to do what you're kind of describing, Chuck. And that was a lot of fun. I hadn't really done that before until this past week. Do you think that uh, at some point, uh, or maybe it's just not the right forum, but to make this conversation private, so, I mean, it's a great forum, but rather than having, you know, and I'm thinking more from a healthcare perspective, um, I like the idea of this would be a great way for the physician and the patient and a couple family members to sit in and have a consult, um, but you wouldn't necessarily want this to be out there and for the well, whole world I think, to see. I think there's two things going on here. Um, and one is is that people's, uh, different generations have different sort of views on on privacy. And in fact, even that, that's also an overgeneralization because I know I've heard of people, older people who have chronic conditions who have literally open sourced the entire electronic medical record. So anybody wants to come in and, sure. you know, but the second thing is, is this, and that is, you know, right now it's a game of survival for you know because there are competitors to Periscope uh, and to Blab, like, such as Meerkat and I think it was three or four, uh, and so they're kind of going for the the sweet spot, the zone, uh, the, the, you know, the consumer uh, entertainment uh, 
electronics drive so much. So they have to be successful in that space. But what you're going to see is once they are successful, then they're going to you know start to uh, mine the uh, narrower uh, veins. Uh, and what you're going to see are public APIs. So, for example, Twitter, uh, you can write your own client against the uh, Twitter API or for analytics. And, and, there, and actually, there are already an API of application programming interface that allows you to write your own application. Uh, in fact, there already is a Periscope API, and there are a number of uh, applications out there that uh, do things uh, like in Periscope Analytics and Blab Analytics. Uh, and so now at that point, you, you can start to leverage the Blab and Periscope video infrastructure for your own purposes. Uh, now, the, the issue, the big issue then becomes uh, how, how, you know, uh, if this data is, is passing through servers uh, in the cloud someplace, well, you can make sure that your client is, you know, HIPAA compliant or is can be used in a HIPAA compliant way, uh, but unless you can get, uh, you know, Periscope and Blab to sign on as business associates, then that's going to be, you know, a, a constraint. However, if you look at what happened to Amazon and to Google and a couple of other cloud providers, uh, they all resisted uh, doing that uh, for years, and then eventually they succumbed. And, and now, you know, so so I, I, I think we're looking at, you know, five years here potentially, and in five years, I think this we're doing right now, which of course really is is really kind of just a, a kind of a more fun, easier to use version of our Google Hangouts. Uh, we're going to see a wide variety of this kind of thing going on embedded uh, in you know uh, health apps, uh, patient facing, provider facing, and so forth. Yeah, I, I I think what you said, Michelle and Chuck. Uh, uh, I think uh, reinforce that. I, I, I thought the same thing, Michelle. What a great tool like this if it could meet the HIPAA standards, uh, you know, for family conferencing or meeting with a specialist with family members and the primary care doc. Uh, I think this, uh, you know, like in the next five years, I think that's going to really be a reality. I really let me, let me just add one more thing. Uh, yes. The, the, the M Health uh, Summit is going on in D.C. Uh, and uh, I, 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 what I do is I go through all the, for major uh, health IT conferences, I go through all the exhibitor websites, looking for workflow related stuff, orchestration engines, workflow engines, customizable workflow, transparent, intelligent, task management, certain, certain keywords. And, but it does give me kind of a sense of the uh, zeitgeist. Uh, and this year there's just a tremendous number of video chats telehealth apps, uh, it, especially for care coordination. Now, I don't know the details of those. Uh, you know, when one thinks of video chatting, one thinks of, you know, a, a virtual visit with a doctor at one end and a patient at the other end. But a lot of these um, uh, mobile health uh, concerns uh, list care coordination uh, and uh, patient communities uh, and all that kind of stuff is, is very similar to sort of social video like we're doing now. So I suspect, uh, you know, we're, we're kind of, you know, what we're doing right now is, is in an unsecure kind of environment. But I wouldn't be surprised if people aren't developing something simply, you know, I mean, if I were an entrepreneur, I'd be looking at Lab and saying, okay, let's, can we, you know, can we do the like, secure version of Lab and be the first one to do it? Uh, and do it, you know, before Lab turns around and, and you know, makes us obsolete and so Interesting uh, set of uh, maybe live maybe live in the interesting times. I think is a Chinese saying. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, I agree, and uh, it is. It really has been a, a lot of fun the past six months, uh, incorporating Periscope and now Blab, and and doing these uh, um, interviews. Uh, so Chuck and I, we've done what about a half dozen now, I think, uh, where we got together, and it's it's getting maybe each time it's up even more fun. So. And Michelle, it's, I'm glad you uh, were a willing participant. And so far, you know, you've been on about, a, what, about 25 minutes, 20, 25 minutes. What's, what's your thoughts so far compared to Google Hangouts versus uh, other mediums? What do you think? I think it's fun, and I can see all sorts of, you know, one of the things I, and I have actually just wrote an article about this, um, but, you know, this would be, a terrific form say you wanted to have breast cancer survivors talking about their experiences something like that and that would be an awesome way to um, you know somebody could ask a question of the panel uh, everyone can kind of share their story what got them through um, and, and certainly there would be people that would uh, be wanting to participate listen in and to Chuck's point about you know, 
get rid of the snarkiness or whatever that you might have on Twitter or, or other or other mediums. Um, absolutely, I think this is, you know, to be able to connect. You're a real person. I see you. I see your expression. I can see your emotion. I can feel your emotion. <laughs> You're real. <laughs> so um, I think it's I think it's fun. You know, I think it's definitely uh, a, a great way. Um, well, have a, a good conversation. I'll tell you what, uh, can I, and, record it. and I'd like to make a pitch because uh, I make the pitch to everybody. And that is both Jimmy and I have proposed a, the first annual Periscope and Blab online healthcare conference. And I don't know if you saw, did you see the blog post on that? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> now there's no date associated with that. Uh, and the reason there isn't any. I said I'd bring, I said I'd sponsor a uh, cocktail. Okay. Well, then, okay. <laughs> <laughs> what, we're, what we're trying to figure out, I mean, I think it, nobody has actually uh, officially uh, submitted a proposal, you know, and we talked about having, you know, four hours from 9 a.m., 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. on a Saturday and multiple tracks and so forth. And now I'm kind of skinny, you know, I'm, my, 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 I'm setting my sights lower. If I can get like two hours, you know, uh, in a single track, you know, people who are committed to doing it. Uh, and uh, anyway, I just thought I, because you're so involved in, uh, Sort of online moderating and so forth. Um, I'm just uh, kind of uh, you know trying to uh, uh, get you uh, to uh, sort of endorse the, it, 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 go beyond cocktails and, and give a presentation. <laughs> All right! Hey, 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 I'm clap! I'm clapping! I'm clapping! Okay, so, so we were thinking about. I don't know if you have you tried Periscope yet, uh, Michelle. I have it loaded on there, and I'm. Kind of peeked around, but now so I have So you've looked at other people's uh, periscopes a little bit. Okay. Yes. Right, so you get basic idea. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, periscope is like, you know, single screen, and then you can have comments, and then lab versus this miniature Hollywood squares. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, periscope would be great for, like, keynotes, uh, and, and mm -hmm. of course, lab for panels, and, uh, and then using Twitter kind of as a backbone uh, to say, you know, to organize things. Uh, and to say, you know, and to tweet out on um, you know, a hashtag, you know, such and such a item is starting right now. Uh, or this is, been, unfortunately, this session has been canceled, however, but consider these other two sessions. Uh, and, uh, and of course, uh, that's all, um, what's the word, uh, influx. Those were just some ideas that we had, and uh, they, they were actually stuck, stuck down there in the postscript of, of that. Uh, but uh, I'd love to, you know, you write, you write prolifically and excellently, uh, and you have a, a, a heck of a, a forum, or a, a, a what, what, you, what, what was it, Teddy Roosevelt? Uh, there was a phrase for um, uh, having a good place to, uh, a bully pulpit, uh, was what uh, Teddy Roosevelt called the presidency. So uh, maybe you should write a blog post about the, the idea of the, the first annual Blab and Periscope online healthcare conference. And then... Okay. And I, I thank you, Chuck. Thank you know, Michelle. That'd be co uh, really cool. And if you were willing to do that, it'd be great. I, I just want to give uh, uh, thank you, J Janet and Joe. They've been following along. I uh, we, I've been watching some of the comments. And one of the difficult things for me is I've always had difficulty multitasking. And I've looked back on my videos, and I look like I'm distracted because I'm trying to look at all the different comments as they come in. So I've tried to minimize doing that, but yet I don't want to fill the folks that are joining by texting along the right-hand column that I'm forgetting about them. So I appreciate you guys all there on the right-hand column, and I just haven't been commenting, but I, I do wanted to uh, uh, let them know that uh, we're glad they're involved as well. And if any of you two wanted to hop on, or uh, that'd be great. But sorry to interrupt you, Michelle, but but uh, thank you, Chuck. All good. Yeah. Well, thanks for thanks for inviting. Oh, you me. bet. So, so now, now uh, I, I like Periscope for like giving tours, right? and I hear, yes. I hear uh, see, and I love to give the tours. Uh, where, where do you live, Michelle? And is, <laughs> is there some? It was my wife. Gesundheit. My wife just said. Uh, <laughs> I'm in Austin. You're Austin. Why? Hey, Austin. I hear. I hear there's like a, a nice park downtown by the river. Is that is that true? Yeah, it is. It's an awesome and it's a place. Great, yeah. A great cultural mecca. I mean, I bet you, bet you there's like cool Austin city and, limits. Yeah, yeah. So if when, when you get on, when you, when you decide to do a periscope, let me know. I think I follow you on periscope. If I haven't, I'll find you. Uh, and I'd love to get a little bit of a tour of Austin one of these days. So I, Check it out. There you in, go. In a, in a, if I know in advance, uh, or if I, you know, what I do is for certain select few, I I, uh, I I mute a lot of the folks I follow. I don't mute Jimmy. 
uh, and, and I don't and I don't mean the people, the health IT people, but uh, the sort of HITSN people, uh, because not many of them are on Periscope you know, yet. You know what might be fun is like say during Hems doing a, a tour of the exhibit yeah. hall, you know, and uh, you know here's some cool stuff mm -hmm. and and that you can share with people. This is this is what I like. This is crap or look at this trinket or. <laughs> That kind of stuff. That might be fun. Yeah. Well, I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of labbing and periscoping from uh, from hymns this year. Yeah. Fun. Well, I'm going okay. to probably have to get started. Uh, patients are going to start rolling okay. in. And I do appreciate Chuck, you joining and Michelle joining. This has been a lot of fun. I really appreciate you guys taking your time out of your busy schedule. So. Well, thanks. You betcha. Thank you all. And I think I, there's another couple of labs coming up. Um, uh, uh melissa oh yeah maybe. melissa mccool yes and, uh, wednesday and wednesday that? i believe isn't it wednesday at 6 30 i think it's 6 30 my time mountain time i believe which would be 5 30 pacific yeah. time and 4 30 eastern time i think there's a lab tomorrow yeah I think it's tomorrow at 4 30 eastern I oh, believe. okay well then uh okay so I th there's another lab floating around uh, but i can't think of it at the time but uh Okay. Well, thank you uh, for letting me uh, participate. No, thank you all. All right. Take care. Take care.